Hi, this is Lee. Wanted to make this quick video on my PowerPoint presentation, um, the one that I'm using to teach this three day hands on training. Um, troubleshooting it down to the component level. Uh, this is basically what I'm going through. Um, it's just a PowerPoint presentation, but it's enough to for a student to basically go through it themselves and learn. Um, by the time I get done with this class or get to the next class, this would have would have been updated because uh, I've got some new materials and you know, some of the things I've added to my training board. So all those will be added here, but this is the one that I've used in the past. So uh, if we could just go through some of these very quickly, just kind of give you guys an idea of what's in here. So basically, uh, what I go through is kind of talk a little bit about what we do and then um, the, the agenda you can see here, uh, day two agenda, uh, expectations. All right. I'll talk about what's, uh, what is troubleshooting, kind of give some diagrams, make some illustrations. Uh, so those are some of the things I'll talk about. I'll talk about ESD, uh, personal safety, how, um, how uh, a tech, or what they should do to keep themselves safe, and then again, uh, how do you keep uh, the board safe from any ESD or anything like that. Uh, Talk about you know, some of the ESD protections, and then you, know, you can see here. Talk about uh, DC AC. Uh, you can see here. We talk about there's basically two methods of of understanding how current flows. You have the conventional current flow, and then you have the electron flow. So we kind of touched a little bit on that. Uh, we'll talk about AC voltages. We, then we go into some of the Testing equipment. So you see here, we talk about uh, like a digital multimeter, some of the things that's on it, a multimeter, and what we basically use. Um, so we'll kind of go and talk through that. Talk about uh, ESR meters. You'll see that um, these are some some of the most common uh, meters out there and how they look like. Uh, you can see DC power supply and and so on curve tracer, how they look like. Here's even a schematic of it and if you uh, build a circuit and you hook it up to the oscilloscope uh, you'll, you'll have a fully functional uh, curve tracer. So we'll talk more in depth about that uh, like what it's used for, how it works, uh, pros and cons of it. We even go into like, like how it would look testing equipments like this is a capacitor signature uh, this is a resistor signature and then here here is um, basically just talking about what the horizontal means and then here you see a, a dial signature so we we'll talk about all that and, and basically how, how to use it and as you can see uh, see some of these other testing uh, equipments. What I try to teach is some of your most common. You know, obviously, as a repair shop, we definitely have way more of this. But for your average tech to get started and have a fully functional uh, workbench, these are your bare minimum, and it's enough for you to uh, do do um, any kind of troubleshooting you know, with electronics. Here's one. The first one we'll talk about is like fuses. Uh, it's very easy to understand, but as far as like fuses on printed circuit boards, there's so many different packages. Like for example, like if you look at these right here, these right here, these right here, even this right here, people would think that that's a capacitor, or some people even th have thought that those were resistors, right? So these, it's just good to show them that the different packages of fuses so that when they see on a board or anywhere they, they would know how to uh, even identify what, what it is because you got to know what it is before you know how to test it so that's why I've included fuses in there but we'll go through and we'll talk about like you know what it is uh, as far as a fuse uh, 
just basic information on that. Uh, like <clears throat> fuses are radiant current and so on. You know, voltage rating on the fuse, what they what that means. Uh, different types of fuses that are out there, like very fast acting, fast acting fuses, and so on, down to slow acting fuses. Now, I'll give an analogy of what a fuse is for. Uh, basically, a fuse is uh, a device that is to protect the circuit, but it necessarily doesn't protect it, it just prevents it from uh, having further damages. Because once you get a high enough current that goes in, it's obviously it's going to uh, pass through the fuse first and then it's going to have some kind, of, some kind of arcing so that amount of uh, current, high current is already in there that may damage your circuit or circuitry already and then I'll go through and just kind of give you an idea of you know, where the fuse is at and you can see there's a fuse here I'll give you an idea of where the fuse is at and where to look for but as, as you can see, as we go, go through resistors, kind of talk about that, how to, um, all the different packages, uh, even color codes. I try to make it as simple as possible uh, for them to see. And not only will they see this, but we'll have um, boards on hand for them to look at and, and see it in uh, with, with their own eyes as far as the real component capacitors. We talk about theories of capacitors. You know, different type of capacitors, common capacitors. You'll see here common problems with capacitors. And we even talk about like testing capacitors like for in circuit, outer circuit. So as, as you can see, it, it, it would definitely go through and tell you what and how to do, uh, test it. So this PowerPoint is basically based off of that, but I go more in depth in person on how to do it and then hands on and then these are your diodes uh, packages and kind of go through the same thing the uh, the theory behind it right I'll say that the th think of a dial as a one-way check valve uh, pretty much anybody that's working in an industrial plant knows how how a uh, check valve works basically it only allows a water a fluid to flow in one direction and if you build enough uh, pressure it's going to open this valve right here and it's going to allow current to flow through and then obviously it doesn't allow any current to flow uh, backwards and it's kind of how I, I teach it you'll see symbols of it again the same thing applications how to test it test in circuit with a multimeter how to test it with a curve tracer testing outer circuit so I'll work my way down into um, building the foundation and building up so as you can see uh, with a diode, you can see it goes up. You see four diodes in the bridge rectifier. Uh, you see different packages of it, and and then you see zeners and thyristors, SCRs, right? People call it different names, but they're basically the same thing. Into uh, <clears throat> into um, thyristors, LEDs, so. Basically, this is kind of the format of it, how to test it. Um, transistors talk about FETs, right? JFETs talk about you talk about MOSFETs, which is somewhere in here, and then we talk about uh, voltage regulators, packages, how they look like. You know, same thing as I go through, and transformers. This, these are all your most common. Uh, packages for transformers and on this part we can show them how, how to read a, a uh, data sheet for it uh, opto couplers and, and so on uh, relays uh, different print circuit board relays how to test it the theory of it applications uh, types we go we go in depth into that how to test an in circuit common problems we, and then we, we talk about integrated circuit. I have a board for logics that they can inject sig signal in to test them. But this is pretty much um, my PowerPoint presentation of how to troubleshoot. I tackle the most common components, most uh, common testing equipment, how to test an in circuit, outer circuit. And then on day three or day two, depending on, on 
the class, I'll have a step-by-step -step, uh, procedure. Uh, let's see if I can find the first. Right. So basically, I'll, I'll go through a step-by-step -step procedure on how to take any board without a schematic, and we basically go through step one. All right, step two. Step two here. Step three. Step four. Wherever step four is at. All right, step five. And, and so on. So all the way down into you know, you know the final thing, which is the most complicated, is your ICs. Go all the way down to that, and then pretty much we we don't necessarily end on here. We we you know, end on questions, right? Because day three will be more hands-on with real boards that students could go through and ask questions and follow up with any uh, any questions they've had from the previous day and. Um, we could touch on topics and even previous students have brought in some of their drives, their AC drives, and we touch on those. But every component that I've, uh, I touch in within this training program is um, basically in a VFD. And we, we, I've had students bring in their VFDs and we've, we've done static checks on those and kind of went through uh, how to uh, identify some of the parts on the VFD, but basically this is my PowerPoint presentation. As I've said, you know, it's going to be uh, more to it because I've got some other things I need to add to it. So it's definitely going to get better as uh, we do more of these. So uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach back out to me or leave a comment. Thank you very much.